That's kind of conversation between the soul. That's conversation between the soul and the night. Hello, Prestige Heads, and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner, here as always with my friend and comrade Derek Davison. And we're very excited to welcome to the podcast today Juan Jose Ponce Vasquez. Juan is an associate professor of history at the University of Alabama, and we've asked Juan to come on to talk about Christopher Columbus. So, Juan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is great. So, maybe let's just start with a basic question, because obviously, if you're born in the United States and, and you're raised here, you, you hear a lot about Columbus from a very early age. You don't really hear that much. He sort of discovered, quote unquote, America. Now, obviously, everyone listening to this is not going to agree with that. But maybe you could give us a sense of who this guy was in the broader context of colonization in which Columbus operated. Yeah. So uh, Christopher Columbus was a uh, Genoese um, sailor, basically, uh, who operated uh, in kind of in the Atlantic world at the time in the kind of 1480s or so. He was basically, he as many other Italian sailors at the time, he was working um, either in the Mediterranean or in this case, actually working for really the cutting edge kind of monarchy in terms of sailing in the age of sail at the time, which was Portugal, right? So he relocated to Portugal uh, in the 80s, 1480s, and he basically uh, conducted different missions for the crown of Portugal. Uh, so, Juan, I actually have a question. Yeah. Like, what is the type of person who does this for a living? Because, you know, I know a little bit more about military history of this period, and the people who joined the militaries yeah. are oftentimes, they're impoverished, they're criminal, they're trying yeah. to escape something. And and my sense is that some similar thing is probably for people who signed up to sail the seas, but what type of person was operating in this way? Well, I mean, sailing, you know, sailing in the, during this time, you know, if, if you're familiar with kind of like 18th century, right, like like military history and all that, you know, like, you know, if you if you are desperate, you know, you go to become a soldier. And if, if you have really nowhere else to go, then you become a sailor, right? A sailor is kind of second tier, even after that was uh, my sense so it yes, was like like a yes. community of sort of like i don't want to ne'er do wells almost you know like well, i mean yeah I, I think there are communities that have a tradition like a sailing tradition right and people who have kind of earned their living in the sea for a very long time and these are traditions to go to father to son right uh so there is that and then you have all those people who are driven to the sea because it's either that or starving right uh so there is like both those two things right uh, I don't. I don't know. Except we, there is so much we don't know about Columbus himself and about his background, right? Uh, but he's definitely somebody who uh, seems to be actually. He was a, a really good sailor. I mean, I think there is. I think the agreement would be he was great sailor, great navigator, not such a great cosmographer, right? So he was a, a, a kind of like a self-taught man. He would learn vor voraciously. Um, he kind of let, tried to read almost everything that he could get hand on about history, astronomy, cosmography, right? Um, and that's how he came. He came to kind of like, um, and he had a lot of experience, right? Navigating all the way from, you know, from the Northern Sea all the way to Guinea and some, um, Central Africa, right? Like West Africa, right? So, so he's a guy who has a lot of experience, and then he's reading a lot of things, right? And you, as you know, people people who read people who read by themselves a lot of things, it can be either brilliant, right? People can be either absolutely brilliant, or actually can lead to some really kind of tortuous and kind of like wrong ways, right? You never know. So, so Columbus was reading voraciously, but he kind of came to the wrong conclusions uh, regarding actually the size of the Earth, right? Uh, in in his readings that he was doing over classics, medieval writings, and kind of like all this stuff he was reading. He basically came to the wrong conclusions about the size of the earth. And he had this plan about basically going to India, going a different route than the Portuguese were trying at the time, right? The Portuguese were trying to go to India around Africa. And he thought, well, maybe actually we can go west because uh, this is, I don't know if your listeners are aware of this. I think we are trying to emphasize this in class like every time. But by the, this time, everybody in Europe is very much aware that the earth is round, right? There is no like flat earthers. There is no such a thing as flat earthers pretty much in the 15th century. We're anymore. actually a flat earther podcast, but we'll <laughs> let you continue. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm um, actually, uh, Juan, I think this, this gives a, a little bit of a good breaking point to talk a little bit about the enlightenment.